Hey, our guest filmmaker, it's my pleasure. I've been filming you a lot. And now it's your chance to film. Okay. We've been talking about time. And we've realized that a clock is really a circle that's divided into 12 equal parts. Each equal part has five minutes in it. Okay, now we can combine those equal parts into quarters. Three of those equal parts is one quarter of the clock, or 15 minutes, three, five, five. Or five, three, doesn't matter. We can divide the clock right in half and have 30 minutes, because one full hour is 60 minutes. Yesterday we did an activity to learn about elapsed time. Elapsed time is the time between when something starts and when something ends. In elapsed time, we are really finding the difference. Oh my! Way too big. Way, 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 way. Let's start over with that. We're really finding the difference. The difference between when we start and when we end. Now, from number talks, we know that finding the difference has many, many different ways to do it. Okay? Yesterday, we realized something, didn't we? Aubrey, Avery, that one of the best ways to find the difference was to use a strategy for subtraction. We found out that adding up is about the best strategy we could find. We didn't have to regroup. We didn't have to worry about that pesky regrouping minutes, because we can't regroup 100 minutes, we can only regroup 60 minutes. And it just worked out perfectly. So we got our iPads out. And we turned them on to the clock out. Okay. And we had it begin. Gave us a starting time. Okay, the starting time is 3.15. Okay, we know it's 3.15 because the minute hand, the minute hand works, the minute hand is on 3. And the hour hand is between 3 and 4. Okay, so we know our start time is 3.15. Well, can we go with a.m. or p.m.? No. No, no it doesn't Probably. Okay, so I'll put in 3.15. Check to make sure I'm right. And it says good job. So I'm correct. Now, then we play again. And we hit the next, and it gave us a new time. Okay, this one gave us 4.15. Now, most of us are going to immediately know that it's one hour later. That it's one hour later. Because when we look at our clock to show the elapsed time, we see that the minute hand is still on three, but our hour hand is now a little bit after four. Let's say, for example, it's So let's show how to use counting up to find the elapsed time. Well, counting up to use the elapsed time So I'm going to put a literal, now we call this a timeline, it really is a timeline now, isn't it? Literally a timeline. Literally a timeline. Okay? I need to add some increments. Okay, well, I'm still not sure about telling time, so I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to add 15 minutes first. So I add 15 minutes. Well, 15, that I know is now 3.30. Okay, well, I could add another 15, but I noticed that 3.30 and 4.40 are... Ten apart. They're only 10 minutes apart. So I'm going to add a full hour. And when I add an hour, I can make it look like I just have a little tiny jump of 10 minutes left. So the difference between my start time
So using this strategy, adding on or adding up, is what we found yesterday, I think, to be about the best way to tell elapsed time. Because elapsed time is the difference between the beginning, when something starts, and when something ends. And the best way to find the difference between the time would be adding up. Okay, today, those of you who have finished this page, and this page, okay, we'll be ready to practice this new game, because I think we might try and teach this to somebody else. We might try and teach this game to another class. So we need to be good at it before we can teach it, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to have you do is go get your papers out of your daily work folders. Wait, wait, wait. And when you get them out, take a look at them. Caleb's going to check and make sure he's done every single page. Okay. Everybody's going to check and make sure they've done every single page. And when you are done, the red page is going to be graded. So it needs to be turned in complete, both sides, not just the back. Some of you only do the back and then don't do this side. Do both sides. And when those are turned in, then we get the iPads out and we'll practice playing our games so that we can teach it to somebody else. Because I think a lot of people are going to want to know this. It's so efficient and so precise that it's much easier than counting around the clock face. Yeah. So I'm thinking if we can teach somebody else how to do this, they're going to really be happy. All right. If you have a red dot, please go back to the desk, get your papers out, take a look at them, see what you have left to do. If you have a yellow dot, take your back, take a look at them, see what you have left to do. Why don't you do the minutes first instead of the hours first? Because you might um, you might go over the elapsed time if you do hours first. I would suggest doing minutes first. Try to get to 45 minutes first, and then all you have to do is add the rest of the hours to get to your elapsed time. 
So if you start at what time? One, one thirty. How many minutes to get to forty? To get from one thirty to forty-five. What is the elapsed time between 1.30 and 4.45? What is the elapsed time? You just wrote it. What is it? 3.15? Yeah, try and remember to do the minutes first. Okay, you're adding on the minutes first. Yeah. Adding on the minutes first. Yeah. 